Hello everybody, um, today we are going to talk about coronary artery thrombus. Um, the idea of this talk is just to give an overview about how the coronary artery thrombus looks like, what are the reasons for coronary artery thrombus. I won't go into detail about the treatment, um, we can cover that in later talks, but this is just to give a brief overview of, of this dreaded complication which can be potentially catastrophic with very bad outcome for the patients. If you look at the cine loop on the left and I have kind of drawn a picture here um, on the right, if you see an artery going probably three o'clock and you see this haziness in the artery, this is exactly how the clot will look like. It's very easy once you look at an angiographic film with a clot and you can distinguish it between a plaque rupture or if it is just a pure clot or if it is a stenosis. So I want you to pay an attention, pay attention uh, to the arrows here. This is an LED, probably an REO caudal view where you see the left circumflex going uh, six o'clock position in between the left circumflex and the LED in red, you have this orange branch, which is in this case a remus intermedius. And if you clearly, uh, if you closely look at this clot, you will see that it's kind of extended, extending almost near the left main, all the way toward the proximal LED, and then you see a septal perforator kind of going down. You don't see any septal perforator before this one with the one that I am uh, showing with the arrows because the clot has probably occluded that. When I say it's a catastrophic condition is because this clot can propagate, it can go proximally and just can shut down the left main or it can go down downstream and it can just plug not only the big epicardial vessels but it can also plug the microcirculation and the capillaries. So we might come across a uh, patient where you might be able to suck this clot out, but this clot might break and shower into distal capillary blood and it just kind of obstruct that outflow. And even though the epicardial vessel might be open, but since there is no outflow with all the capillaries, small blood vessels filled with a clot, eventually the, the whole artery might shut down because of the stasis. In this cine loop on the left, as I said, it's a, it's a catastrophic condition because you see that the clot is not only involving the proximal LED, but it's kind of encroaching the ostium of the ramus intermedius. And if an attention is not directed towards an emergent treatment, it can potentially lead to the, to the shutting down of the left main. So what are the common reasons uh, that we see these clots? Obviously one thing that you don't want is, is to have an iatrogenic clot. When I say iatrogenic clot is, be, is, uh, is during an angiographic procedure, if you're not flushing your catheter, if you're not flushing the sheath, let's say for example, in between the exchange of the catheters, um, in between the exchange of the catheters, um, if there is a clot formation in the sheath, that can, and then the next time you put your catheter, even the diagnostic catheter, it can pick up that clot. And if you are not very careful, while as before injecting into the coronary and not aspirating, you can potentially uh, push that clot into the coronary artery. Another one is, is an embolic phenomenon where a clot might not be introduced iatrogenically or might not have come from the coronary but it might have formed somewhere else and, and has gone into the coronary artery. It can be a paradoxical embolism. We all hear this in the textbook 
patient with deep venous thrombosis and if they have some kind of a shunt between the right and the left side, maybe an ASD or a patent forum and oval, it can allow the clot to go from the right side into the left and it can potentially go into the coronary artery. Or if the patient has got an LV thrombus, patients who have massive MI and they have akinetic or hypokinetic apex, they, they tend to have these clots in the left ventricular cavity and if those clots are ruptured, they can potentially go into the coronary or they can give a patient give patient a stroke. The third thing is a, a, a patient who is hypercoagable. And that we see and in this patient, the one that I am seeing is probably related to uh, drug abuse. So we know that the patients who are uh, using drugs, um, heroin, or other IV drugs, they, they tend to have a hypercoagable state and then they can have these clots. One thing I forgot to mention in the embolic, although very rare and potentially very lethal, is, is, a, is a bacteria or a vegetation or, or, uh, or an embolic vegetation that might come from the valve and then it might go into the coronary artery. So a septic emboli can also go into the coronary artery. So coming back to the hypercoagable state, as we talked about patients who are having uh, drug abuse, patients who have some kind of underlying malignancy, and last but not the least is the HIV patients. So HIV and AIDS patients, we know they tend to have a hypercoagable state and they will uh, have predisposition of these clot formation and sometimes they come with ACS or acute coronary syndrome uh, with a clot in the coronary artery. Last but not the least that we all are aware of is a plaque rupture. Somebody who has a coronary artery disease, um, they have unstable plaque, the plaque ruptures and yes there will be a lot of plaque macrophages, leukocytes, but then the secondary phenomenon is, is, is the clot formation. So if those patients are not properly anticoagulated or treated uh, with a stent or some kind of intervention, that ruptured plaque is a nidus for more clot formation, platelet sticking, and, and potentially um, total shutdown of the coronary artery. So one thing um, I want you to pay an attention on the on this cine loop is if you look at the um, these arteries, I'm just pointing towards the left circumflex, you see how smooth this vessel is. Similarly, if you look at the, the ramus intermedius, all and you follow it all the way, it looks very pristine with a lumen which is very, very smooth. Similarly, in the LED, if you look at the LED, and try to keep an eye on how try to follow this you will see that see that distally it's probably got timmy one flow but all through the course of this coronary the coronary artery is very smooth so that kind of tells you it's probably a, a clot not a plaque rupture because it's very unusual to have a plaque in one artery or in one particular position where you have a plaque rupture and a clot formation so you might see a clot in patients who might have stenosis or diffuse coronary artery disease and a plaque rupture and then you see a clot. But if you see somebody like this patient where the rest of the arteries, everything looked very pristine, smooth, why would this patient would have a plaque rupture? So it's, un it's not that it's not possible, but highly unlikely to have a plaque rupture with uh, the rest of the arteries without any disease. Then we come to the last thing, which is uh, I just want to leave you with, with one bored pearl. Um, for some reason, on the cardiovascular board or a cardiovascular exam, whatever exam you will be taking, they 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 love to ask about fondoparinux. And this fondoparinux is is associated with increased catheter thrombosis. So patients who come in with ACS, you can treat them with low molecular weight heparin, you can treat them with heparin, 
but the font of Paranex has been shown to increase having more incidence of catheter-related thrombosis. So we usually don't use this unless we are only treating patients um, medically or they are not the candidate for any kind of intervention in those situations fundoparanex can be used because we know uh, it has less bleeding tendency than the low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated heparin but for the board exams and any cardiovascular exam that you might be taking they might ask you about fundoparanex that is related with increased catheter thrombosis so with that we we finished this another coronary angiogram talk on a finding that you might come across we will try to cover another topic in the next talk thank you very much